booktube it's Andrea and I'm here today with my April book haul this is for me a small book haul it only has two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten books in all one of which isn't here so I'll start with that one so the first book I got this month was The Married Girls by Dini Costello Costello this was sent to me by Head of Zeus Books as part of their blog tour for the publication I haven't got that because I've actually finished it and I've lent it to my mum so what I will do is I will insert a picture here and obviously I'll talk about that one in my wrap up more. So basically it just tells the stories of um, some girls who are obviously married, hence the title, The Married Girls. The first girl is named Charlotte and she's married to Billy and they live quite happily. Now Charlotte was um, a German refugee in the war. She came across on the Kindertransport um, pr just prior to the war breaking out and she settled to life in England and married a guy named Billy and basically the main story follows Charlotte, uh, Charlotte's life through the next uh, decade. I thought it was a great story but again I'll talk about this more. Um, lots of tragedy and love and hope and children and yeah yeah it was a very interesting book but I'll talk about that more later. The next book I picked up was one I, one I picked up in London so if you watched my London haul you would have seen this and this was Necropolis London and it's dead by Catherine Arnold. I've seen this before and I wanted to read it. Um, layer upon layer of London soil reveals burials from prehistoric and medieval times. The city is one giant grave filled with the remains of previous eras. The Houses of Parliament sit on the edge of a former plague pit. St Paul's is built over human remains. Underground tunnels were driven through forgotten catacombs thick with bones. A society can be judged by the way it treats its dead and this is especially true of London. From Roman burial rites to the horrors of the plague, from the founding of the great Victorian cemeteries to the development of cremation and the cult of mourning that surrounded the death of Diana, Princess of Wales, Necropolis leaves no headstone unturned in its exploration of our changing attitudes towards the deceased among us. So. I think that'd be fascinating. I love visiting cemeteries. I love death things. I, I, it's the history that surrounds um, the deceased people um, and our history in general. And I thought that would be a fascinating read. So I picked that one up in Waterstones. Um, Greenwich. Another book I've been meaning to pick up for a while but haven't been able to find. I managed to get this month from my own branch of Waterstones in Newport and that was Shirley Jackson, The Haunting of Hill House. I must admit I've never read this so I picked up a lovely copy of the Penguin Modern Classics to go with my Modern Classics collection. I'm sure most of you have read this but I will read the bump on the back. Alone in the world, Eleanor is delighted to take up Dr Montague's invitation to spend a summer in the mysterious Hill House. Joining them are Theodora, an artistic sensitive, and Luke, heir to the house. But what begins as a light-hearted experiment is swiftly proven to be a trip into their darkest nightmares and an investigation that one of their number may not survive. Mm. The best known of Shirley Jackson's novels and filmed twice as The Haunting, this is an immaculate examination of how fear can make us our own worst enemy. And that in itself is sounds brilliant, so I'm looking forward to picking that up. Um, then I picked up two Stephen Kings for the Stephen Kingathon that Missy is doing over at Binge Reader. So from now to October, the plan is to read the Dark Tower series. So I picked up book one, The Gunslinger, and book two, The Drawing of Three. I'm, you know, oh, I haven't read any of these. Well, I have now because obviously I've read this. I read this in April. Um, so this is obviously a step away from his normal horror genre into the fantasy western thing. I think. Firefly and Serenity and you might be just about there without the space. Um, so this is a newly revised and expanded edition, which is fine. In The Gunslinger, Stephen King introduces readers to one of his most enigmatic heroes, Roland of Gilead, the last gunslinger. He is a haunting figure, a loner on a spellbinding journey into good and evil in a desolate world which frighteningly echoes our own. In his first step towards the powerful and mysterious Dark Tower, Roland encounters an alluring woman named Alice, begins a friendship with Jake, a kid from New York, and faces an agonising choice between damnation and salvation as he pursues the man in black. Both grippingly realistic and eerily dreamlike, the gunslinger leaves readers eagerly awaiting the next chapter, chapter and the tower is closer. Did I find this grippingly? Did I want to know what happens next? Can I not wait to pick up the next book, which is a lot thicker? I'll let you know in my wrap-up. So yes, keeping on with Stephen King, I picked up The Drawing of Three, part two in the, the Dark Tower series. So this is May's read for the Stephen King a thon, -a -thon. Hopefully I'll get part, the, 
book three next. Um, so this one goes, on his journey across the mid-world to reach the Dark Tower, errant knight Roland of Gilead, the last gunslinger, encounters three doors, each leading to New York. Here he joins forces with the defiant Eddie Dean and courageous volatile Odetta Holmes and must confront deadly ser serial killer Jack Mort. As the titanic forces gather, a savage struggle between the underworld evil and otherworldly enemies threaten to bring an end to Roland's quest for the Dark Tower. Massively weaving dark fantasy and gritty real realism, the drawing of, ta of three propels readers towards the next chapter and the tower is closer. And I think that probably says it on every single one. But yes, I will be reading that this month. Back to non-fiction or allegedly non-fiction I'm going to say and this is a book called Valentino Speaks The Wisdom of Valentino Cues and Views from the Other Side by Wayne Vincent Hatford there is a sequel to this which I already have I haven't read it yet it's in my TBR jar we'll be picking one of those later but not in this video so basically this is Valentino communicating with the author from beyond the grave which is fascinating there's a grave that kind of thing going on here. So it says, in his rather short but spectacular lifetime, Rudolph Valentino was known as many things, gifted actor, iconic lover, soulful poet. Now, more than 80 years after his death, contact with his spirit reveals yet another dimension to his shining presence. Who would have expected Valentino to be a source of thought-provoking ideas and practical wisdom on a whole host of personal and spiritual topics? Yes, it is so, and Wayne Hatford has expertly channeled what the Valentino essence would have us know. Valentino Speaks simulates the mind, touches the heart and expands the consciousness to new levels of awareness and a greater appreciation for the beauty of life in all its iterations. Consider it an invitation to tango with a master dancer and prepare to be delighted the moment you step out onto the floor. Now, Rudolf Valentino himself was actually into spiritualism in a great way. He and his wife Natasha Rambova were, were very much into um, trying to communicate with the afterlife. So it's really in keeping with him. So this literally cost me £2.33 on Amazon. So for that, it's quite a thick book and it's one that I've had in my cart for a while. I'm actually really going to look forward to reading this one and see what Valentino's got to tell us. I wish he'd come to me in my dreams, I can tell you. <laughs> that was a very quiet dirty laugh not a big one I picked up a couple of second hand books well three actually from my local branch of Tesco on their charity shelf yay Tesco doing things for local charities gotta be done and they were Chasing Harry Winston by Lauren Weisberger she wrote The Devil Wears Prada I've read that I've seen the film I enjoyed the book more than the film goes without saying although Meryl Streep can't go wrong so I thought I would pick up this for 50 pence so three best friends, two resolutions and one year to pull it off. Emmy is newly single. Having always dreamed of wedding plans, she's now buying takeout for one. Adriana is about to turn 30. Are her days as a party girl running out? And Lee has a gorgeous boyfriend and a great job. So why isn't she more excited about her perfect life? The three best friends make a pact over raspberry mojitos one night. This year, everything is going to change. Emmy is going to find a man on every continent for some no-strings fun. Adriana vows she'll secure a five-carat Harry Winston diamond on her fourth finger and Lee can't think of what she needs to change until literary bad boy Jesse Chapman starts to get under her skin. Game on. A nice bit of chiclet, bit of fun. 50p, can't go wrong. Another 50p bargain from Tesco's charity shelf was The Secret Shopper's Revenge by Kate Harrison. I'm pretty sure I've read some of The Secret Shoppers before. I haven't read this one. I love this when the going gets tough, the tough go shopping, or in my case, the tough go book shopping. So this one says, um, imagine shopping for a living, spying on the poshest stores and setting a few scores. It's a tough job, but someone's got to do it. Single mum Emily wants revenge on the stick thing assistants who laugh at her post baby tummy and post baby budget. Store manager Sandy has a lifelong love of retail until she's stitched up by her ambitious deputy and glamorous widow Grazia can't live behind to the high life despite her chronically low bank balance. Together they're Charlie's shopping angels controlled by a mysterious figure who sends them assignments from heaven and the occasional one from hell. Now this is perfect for summer. This is my idea of a perfect summer read. I'm off to Tenby for a few days in June. Tenby is a beautiful town on the southwest coast of Wales. I've never been there, but I know it's beautiful because I've seen pictures. So I think I might take this. And if it's a nice hot day, I'll read it on the beach. And if it's raining, I'll read it in the caravan. So that'll be fun. Oh, 
and they all just fell down. That was me being silly and trying to stack them up. Never mind, they're fine. They have, they, they're, they're fine. The books are fine. Honest, look. look. The books, the books are fine. The books are fine. There's no problems with the books. They just, they just had a little fall. We've all fallen. They just, I've just picked them up. They're fine. Uh, another one of my 50p bargains is Peter James's Perfect People. This was, as you can see, £11, and that's a Tesco sticker, so it was £11 in Tesco. I think it's Tesco. Now, I've actually read this book, but I love Peter James, and as for 50p, I thought, I don't own a copy, because I took the copy I read out of the library, so I thought I'd add this to my burgeoning Peter James collection. When I see them in hardback for 50p, I'm going to pick them up, regardless of whether I've got them in paperback or not. So this one, I will tell you what it's about. I, this one was really quite freaky, to be fair. John and Naomi Klassen are grieving the death of their four-year-old son from a rare genetic disorder. They desperately want another child, but when they find out they are both carriers of the rogue gene, they realise the odds of their next child contracting the same disease are high. Then they hear about geneticist Dr Leo de Torre. He has methods that can spare them the heartache of ever losing another child to any disease, even if his methods cost more than they can afford. His clinic is where their nightmare begins. They should have realised something was wrong when they saw the list. Choices of eye colour, hair, sporting abilities. They can literally design their child. Now it's too late to turn back. Naomi is pregnant and already something is badly wrong. I've read this book. It is a freaky as hell book. Um, really, really scary um, take on um, designer children and genetics and what we can do and what perhaps we shouldn't do um but it's a great great story definitely worth a read i might even reread it at some point but it's a bit of a chunker i will reread it at some point but it's going to go on my new hardback bookcase for fiction which is in the bedroom there's a picture of it on my coloring video if you want to quickly spew through. i won't put that there because it'll just fall off Next is the book that came from my book in a brew um, for April, which is James Lee Burke's Wayfaring Stranger. I've already read the synopsis for this, so I'm not going to read it again. If you do want to see what this book is about, I'll leave a link to, below to the, the relevant video where you can check it out. I haven't read any James Lee Burke for a long time. I've read him in the past, but not recently. Um, and this could either be a really bloody brilliant book or it's going to be really long, drawn out and boring. You can never tell. But it's got a really nice cover. So I am actually looking forward to this because it does sound like my kind of thing. And it's set, when did it set? It's set in 1934. Between the wars, in the Depression. And the last book I bought in April, well it wasn't the last book, but I'm showing it to you last because that's the way I rock and roll, is a book I already own. So I'm going to unhaul the copy I've got, which is a falling apart paperback and I will take it to the charity shop and I've replaced it with this the uh, one of the penguin cloth band classics now I know that a lot of people don't like these because they do the ink does rub off onto your hands but I did want a nice hardback copy of Bram Stoker's Dracula because I'm currently experiencing a big big Dracula vibe I've got a Dracula coloring book I'm writing a story based on Dracula pre that pre goes before this uh, um for myself I mean whether or not it'll ever be published who knows but I'm writing it I might as well uh, basically it tells the full story of how Dracula became a vampire because you know that's the way I like you know um but I wanted a nice new copy of Bram Stoker's Dracula for my book collection so I picked up this one obviously I'm not going to read out the book because you know what this is about and if you don't why haven't you read it because it's awesome it's like one of the best books ever written um, so I'm happy to add that lovely, lovely penguin hard cloth bound classic to my collection. So those are the 10 books that I obtained in April. 10 books for me is not bad. Of course, I didn't even read 10 books in April because I've been doing a lot of colouring. But there'll be more of that in my April wrap up, which will be coming fairly shortly. So I hope you enjoyed this little book haul. There will be a book haul in May. It may be small, it may be big. It depends. I still haven't been to Book Barn yet, so I still have money to spend on books. Yay. Um, but I will be going there at some point, hopefully this month. Um, and if I do, obviously I will take you with me. But that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed these books. If you've read any of them, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like, share, and of course subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. And I will see you soon. Thanks, BookTube. Bye now.